Okay, so hello and welcome back. Now in this video we will talk a little bit about exercise 1.2 and essentially as long as we are in the NCERT line of books in every course meaning in every chapter there is a couple of these sets of exercises so for example this is um, this is the first chapter of this book meaning the, the book of class 6 basically and this is the first chapter right out of this first chapter is essentially this this course is being made and so essentially this number one means essentially that this exercise set comes from chapter one and then this number two means that essentially this is the second set of exercises in this chapter okay so there was for example in this chapter we had exercise 1.1 which was the first set in this chapter then the 1.2 there might be 1.3 there might i mean it could be even up to six sets of exercises in one chapter depending on the length of the chapter so then um, the, the and and of course um, it is um, important i mean if you want to use these um, essentially if you want to use the whole line of ncrt textbooks to learn mathematics right to learn mathematics if it is your school book then of course you have to do the whole thing but otherwise if you come from some other system and if you're learning mathematics with these courses then um, one thing that is important is that you have to essentially follow the whole line of books meaning you have to go from class 6 all the chapters and go all the way up to class 12 all the chapters all the way through right secondly um the one of the characteristics of the of these books is that you have to read everything meaning the exercises the examples then everything that comes in the book you have to work through them you cannot leave anything out because there is something here something there and then once you have done once you've learned the whole thing then in your mind you can put it together that becomes if you do it this way it becomes essentially a very good foundation for mathematics basically okay and then that's it essentially so and then essentially when it comes to exercises of course there is no solution here in the text but there is always um, basically the essentially a website that you can that you can go to essentially to this website always and essentially um, in this website as you can see so for example you can go to the, the essentially the, the the domain name is tiwariacademy.com as you can see here and then once you go to the website once you go to the website essentially if you go to click here to go to the home page and you see that essentially select your class for example this course is being taken from class 6 and subject mathematics and then chapter for example one knowing our numbers you select all of these find solution and essentially in these solutions that you find on Tiwari Academy there is seldom meaning very rarely is there any mistakes otherwise there is all I mean there is many other places where you can find this these solutions for these books but then this is the best source that I've ever found I mean that it has almost no mistakes I mean the solutions have no almost no mistakes and you see over here class 6 math chapter 1 solution for state board you can go for for example CBS eboard any any of them would 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 work but then for CBS eboard for example and then uh, six uh, class six math exercise 1.2 in English and then you have basically as you can see the the solutions are given here now sometimes it is you can only 
essentially view the solutions on on the web meaning on a, in a browser sometimes they give you a pdf for high, high for essentially for high higher classes they give you the solutions on the web and and so then you can and and then sometimes as i mentioned you can download the pdf of the same page and then open it on on your computer using some sort of pdf viewer you can you can you can open the file on your computer locally and then you can work through that so all the solutions are here whatever you do it's important to understand the solution and then if you have to copy even if you have to copy the solution that's not a problem but then at least you have to go to i mean if you cannot work through the problem on your own then of course you have to take a look at the solution see how the problem has been solved and then do it exactly for example in the exact same way one once at least yourself meaning write things down in mathematics it's important to write things down it has to be connected with your hand otherwise your mind will probably forget the thing but but then when you write it down it sticks most of the time and that's it essentially so all the solutions of all the chapters of all of these books from class 6 all the way up to class 12 you can essentially find on this website and if i happen to do any of these courses on my own of course then the solution in video format is always in the courses you can you can i mean if it's more convenient in different cases you can either consult the videos or consult the pdf from tr academy and so the the, the problem is that we solved okay that's about basically uh, these exercises all of them now these exercises are simple but the ones that I, we will talk we will talk about them a little bit so we have the exercise 1.2 so essentially number one is a book exhibition was held for four days in a school the number of tickets sold at the counter on the first second third and final day was respectively 1094 18 12 20 50 50 and 27 51 find the total number of tickets sold on all the four days so essentially you know that the number of tickets on the first day the second day the third day the fourth day you already know that and you want to know the total number of tickets sold on all the four days together right so that means that essentially you have to add these numbers together meaning that you would write 1094 plus 1812 plus 2050 plus 20, 2751 add them together whatever the number that you get is is basically um the number the, the total number of tickets sold on all the four days right so that is basically that now of course now i'm not i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm not going meaning that then you can of course mm, solve the problem easily right shekhar shekhar is a famous cricket player he has so far scored 6980 runs in the in the in test matches he wishes to compete 10000 runs complete 10000 runs how many more runs does he need so he has completed so many runs and then he wishes to complete essentially 10000 and so how many runs does he need so what is that means essentially what is the difference between the runs that he has already scored and the runs that he wishes to complete it but he has not completed yet right which means that essentially to solve the problem you can just simply subtract 6980 from 10000 the difference is the is going to be the number of runs that he needs in, to complete in order to complete 10,000 runs right so that's simple um, essentially the, in these examples sometimes you have to do addition sometimes you have to use subtraction sometimes you have to use division sometimes you have to use uh, 
uh, multiplication and it's important to understand the situation and then do the the appropriate uh, uh, solution essentially do the appropriate operation basically um, and these are of course very i mean to under understanding the nature of addition the nature of subtraction the nature of multiplication the nature of division is of course to understand the nature of them is important because of the fact that when you get to essentially when you get to class 12 when you get to a little bit higher mathematics like calculus and and essentially when you get to calculus then the, the same exact four basic operations of addition subtraction multiplication and division are used in creative ways to build calculus meaning that it essentially in the many 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 thousand years ago these operations already existed meaning there was already i mean mathematicians knew about addition they knew about um, addition and subtraction and multiplication and division they already knew about these and they used them for thousands of years after thousands of years passed and mathematicians worked enough long enough with these operations they actually did understand them to 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 to, to the extent that they could essentially put them together in creative ways in order to create calculus otherwise calculus which is integration and 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 and, and the taking the derivative and all of those things which is essentially the 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 higher things in mathematics that's nothing but the same basic operations basically the same basic operations but then when you use these operations you understand these operations and use them creatively it becomes calculus okay and of course when as long as you are moving through these books class six seven eight nine on so on and so forth all the way up to the end to class 12 it's important to understand each and every one of these concepts because essentially everything that you learn in your basic mathematics is essentially somehow in one way or another essentially brought together to 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 essentially to build calculus meaning if you want to be able to understand your calculus when you get there it's i mean the time to start is right now that that essentially the time to start the right time to start is right now in the beginning from the very beginning, each and every concept has to be understood properly. So, number three is, um, in an election, the successful candidate registered 5,77,500 votes and his, and his nearest rival secured 3,48,700 votes. That is 577,500 and that is 3, 148,700 right by what margin did the successful candidate win win the election so margin means difference right so by what by what by 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 what margin that means that essentially you have to take the the smaller number and subtract it from the larger number to get the margin meaning to get the difference meaning that this is about five lakhs about six lakhs this is three and a three and a um, about three and a half lakhs so then you 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 can simply write essentially five like seventy seven thousand five hundred minus three lakhs forty eight thousand seven hundred and then subtract the answer would be the margin meaning the difference right okay now the next question the next question is Kirti Bookstore sold books worth 2,85,891 rupees meaning rupees you could think of that if, if, if essentially if you're not you can think of that as the of course it is the the currency of India right so the currency unit for India 
So for example, we have rupees, we have dollars, we have euros, we have yen, we have all of those currencies. So rupees is used in India. So in the first week of June, um, and books worth 4,768 rupees in the second week of this month. How much was the sale for the two weeks together? And in which week was the sale greater and by how much? So the, essentially the, the whole sale, essentially the total sale for the two weeks together, if you want to calculate that, you would simply add the two numbers together and then the unit would be in rupees, meaning so many rupees, so many rupees added together would be the sum of the two numbers in rupees, right? And then you want to know uh, in which week was the sale greater. So of course, 2 lakhs 85,000 85, is less than 4 lakhs and whatever, right? So 4 lakhs is a greater number, which means that in the in the second week, the sale was greater, of course, right? And by how much? So by how much you want to know the difference? So then basically you would write, for example, this number minus this number would be the difference. And that is essentially the, the answer to by how much. Now find the difference between the greatest and the least five digit number that can be written using the, these five digits each only once, right? So this is something that we can actually do or I'm, I'm going, I'm going to, to solve this problem. So, um, so the difference between the greatest, so we're talking essentially about the greatest and so essentially the greatest five digit number, five digit number, all using the same and, and, and the smallest five digit number, five digit number, all, both of which essentially using the digit six, two, seven, four and three. So you want to do that. You want to find these two numbers. And in writing the numbers, essentially you have to, based on what is essentially given in the problem, the numbers are supposed to be, essentially each digit is supposed to be used only once in the number, meaning you cannot repeat any of the digits. So the greatest five digit number, basically you have you have essentially one, two, three, four, and five digits here. And uh, basically the, in order to make the greatest number possible, basically this is the ones place value, the tens, hundreds, thousands, and 10,000, right? So the more essentially the greater the, essentially suppose that Suppose that basically I have, I want to make this number. So I have the five digits here. And the, and the greatest digit that I have among all of these digits is essentially the seven. This is the greatest. And then the smallest would be this digit over here. This is the smallest digit, right? So if I put essentially, if I put a two over here, right? And suppose that, for example, the number is just randomly 6535, and then the last digit is a 2, for example, right? I'm just talking about the 2 here. If I, if I put the 2 over here, or I could put the 7 over here, which is the greatest digit that can be found among these digits. So that is 6, that would be 6535, and, and the 2, and the, excuse me, the 7. Now the, the difference between these two numbers would be just five, meaning 65,357 minus 65,352 would be just a five, right? So because essentially the, the place value is the one's place value, any digit that you put in this place value is just multiplied by one, which means that it doesn't really matter what what you put in this place value it doesn't have that much 
influence over the over the overall value of the number now suppose that basically suppose that i have i have the same five digit number but then i have one digit here five three five and seven and then five three five and seven and then the first digit i want to choose from these digits and again the greatest digit is a seven the smallest digit is a two right now you see that this number is a 75,357 that's a 70,000 but then this is a 25,000 just that's just 20,000 which means that the difference between the two numbers is about 50,000 50,000 right but then but then the difference over here the difference over here is just a 5 5 and 50,000 that's that's essentially 10,000 times right 10,000 times well of course give or take right and so when you want that that that, that essentially shows you that when you want to make the greatest number possible essentially the, the greatest uh, the greatest place value that you find in the number you have to make it as large as possible Meaning that, for example, I want to I want to make the greatest base 65 digit number f using these digits. I go for basically I go for the greatest place value in this number, which is the essentially 110 and 100 and 1000 and 10,000. I go for this place value, which is the greatest one, and then fill it with the greatest digit that is available to me, which is of course the seven. So I put the seven over here, and then again you put you do the same thing. The greatest, the greatest place value in the number is after after this place value is the next one, which is this one, and then the greatest digit which is available to me. Now this one is taken. The greatest digit is a six. So I put the six over here. Again I do the same thing here. The greatest digit is a four. The greatest digit is a two. The greatest a, a three, excuse me, and the greatest digit is a two. So then your number essentially becomes seventy six thousand four four thirty two. The number over here would be would be basically seventy six thousand four hundred thirty two, right? Now, what is the smallest five-digit number that you can make using these digits? So the smallest number, again, you have to, the, the, the strategy that you use is to essentially have, for example, the five digits here. So since you want to make the smallest number possible using these digits, then what you're going to do, based on the logic that we used before, you have to go for the smallest place value or essentially go for the largest for example place value which is the 10,000 place value uh, and then fill it with the with the smallest digit that is available to you right so you go for the for the basically for the you go for the largest place value in the number and then fill it with the smallest digit that you have so the smallest digit is a 2 then it's a three for example then it's a four then it's a six for example and then it's a seven right so the number essentially becomes twenty three thousand four hundred sixty seven right so um so as you can see if you if if, if you if you if you take a look at the, the two numbers you can see that starting from the largest place value in every number in each and every number essentially starting from the largest place value moving towards the right essentially in the case of the greatest number the the digits essentially the value of the digits keep decreasing as you move towards the right meaning seven six four three two meaning seven is greater than six six is greater than four four is greater than three three is a greater than two but then in the case of the smallest number as you start from the largest place value and move towards the right then basically the value of the digits keep increasing meaning 
2 is less than 3, 3 is less than 4, 4 is less than 6, 6 is less than 7, and 7 is the greatest digit in this number. Whereas in this case, essentially the greatest digit, digit in the number is the first one on the largest place value in the number on the left, basically, right? Now, um, now we want to know essentially the difference between these two numbers. So the difference means subtraction. So I write 76432 minus 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7. And you want to subtract. So you have to borrow something from here. So for example, a I borrow a, a 1 from here. This becomes a 2. This becomes a 12. 12 minus 7 is equal to 5. I borrow something from here. This becomes a 3. This becomes a 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. Borrow something from here. This becomes a 5. This becomes a 13. 13 minus 4 is equal to 9. 5 minus 6 is equal to 2. 7 minus 6 is equal to 5. And so the difference is 52,965. Right? So the difference is, that is essentially the difference. The difference is 52,965. Meaning that, meaning that if you take the difference and add it to the smaller number, you should get the, the great, the greater number. Meaning 52,965 plus, for example, 23467, if you add them, you should get the greater number. So 5 plus 7 is equal to 12, 1. 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 1 is equal to 13, 1. 9 plus 4 is equal to 13, 14, 1. 5 plus 1 is equal to 6, and then 5 plus 6, that's 76, 432. 76, 432. Okay. And of course, all of these principles, if when you, if, of course, when you learn them, you can use them in, um, in 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 accountancy for example that's one of the subjects that you will that you will have in in ncrt if you are a student or essentially anywhere else that you are in the world there is a subject called accountancy you you essentially you keep track of the money that comes in goes out and all of this and that essentially involves a lot of of course calculation so and the essentially the better that you are with numbers um, the better you will be at anything that has to do with the with the with the with the modern world meaning the modern world computers calculation science and so on and so forth essentially the numbers are the basics essentially the basis of um, anything that you could think of and um, especially with these and CRT textbooks, you will be essentially if you read them thoroughly and carefully and completely from class six, for example, to class 12, even if you're not from India, just to learn the basic mathematics, it's really worth it. I mean, it's fun, it's informative, it's effective, it's beautiful, it's anything that you could think of. And you will learn a whole lot of things about numbers, about counting, about geometry, about whatever you could think of is in mathematics. It's just a, I mean, uh, it's just the most fabulous thing I've ever probably seen. I've read many different types of books, but I would give number one to the NCERT mathematics textbooks okay in all of the books that I've ever read in my in this lifetime okay now the next question that we have is question number six and I'm going to leave it to the next video because this video is getting already a little bit long thank you